Hello everyone, um, we are going to have to uh, get all adrenaline up to all uh, get ready for an obstetric hemorrhage session now. Okay, as much as adrenaline goes through the mother while she's actually going through a hemorrhage in the labor room, uh, there's plenty of adrenaline going on in the team members who are actually taking care of this mother to actually ensure she is saved at the end of it and the baby is okay and actually both of them go home safely. And that's when the smiles turn up on the faces of the entire team. So here in this session today, we are going to talk about what are the causes of obstetric hemorrhage? How do you pick it up early? How do you actually act fast and get the mother and baby home safely? Okay, so hemorrhage can happen during pregnancy and puparium. It just seems like a natural thing to happen because uh, that's what we have all seen. And normally it can actually happen about 500 ml, but the mother is good, usually compensate very well for up to 1 to 1.5 liters if she is an ASA1 healthy mother uh, who is able to compensate for the bleed. So we have seen umpteen number of uh, mothers deliver in hospital, out of hospital, have a bleed and still survive. However, there is a certain percentage of them who can actually actually die uh, in hospital uh, and that should never happen and hopefully we should be able to prevent them okay so when does it actually become a significant bleed anything more than uh, 1.5 liters or more than 40 percent of the blood volume for that particular mother okay that is a significant bleed and can cause severe morbidity and even mortality if you don't actually act quite quickly so the bleed happens and if you don't arrest on time uh, and replace with appropriate fluid you can actually uh, not compensate and recover in fact she would go downhill from there okay uh, mothers with comorbidities actually become a uh, problem here. So, it might be either an obstetric complication or a mother who actually has bleeding issues by itself. They become decompensate uh, quite fast. So, you need to be you know, very cautious when you're dealing with such mothers in the labor room. Uh, so, decompensating mother with ongoing bleed uh, and an impending onset of uh, DIC, cardiac or neurocompromise. So, these are the clinical points that you're actually looking for when there is a bleeding patient in the labor room. So, it's often a very important uh, thing to be uh, geared up for when you're on call for an obstetric unit. So, when you get a call from the labor room and say, the mother is bleeding, uh, please can you come and help, you should immediately be clued into that this might be beyond what the obstetricians and the labor room staff actually deal with on a regular basis. So, you should get ready and your theater team also should be immediately ready. So, why is hemorrhage so serious? Hemorrhage can actually lead on to shock. Shock by definition itself means inadequate tissue perfusion. So, when the hemorrhage becomes to a stage where it causes uh, total lack of tissue perfusion, it is pretty disastrous. So, we can classify hemorrhagic shock like any other shock into four classes, class 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, class 1 is when the loss is less than 15% which may happen uh, uh, with the low blood volume loss less than 15% with clinically minimal changes. So, the heart rate does not really go up, the mother is able to manage very well, she compensates. <music>